Heather Ann Williamson was born June 16, 1955, the oldest of four children. She was an excellent skier and loved the outdoors, and everyone who knew her marveled at her culinary skills. Heather was an amazing cook, and Heather was extremely energetic, often confidently announcing, sounds like a plan, once a course of action was settled upon, whether it was to pick some veggies and make supper, or backpack in the mountains for a weekend. Heather had applied her energies productively in life, earning a master's degree in organic chemistry, and working for nine years as the chief editor of an international scientific journal. On Thanksgiving Day 1989, Heather was married to David Messenger, an intelligent and successful salesman. The couple had a son in November 1992, and things seemed well in the Messenger household. Heather spent most of her time with her son, even while working, and embraced motherhood with the same enthusiastic joy with which she savored life. In December 1997, Heather and David Messenger learned that Heather was pregnant. On January 3, 1998, just a month later, David Messenger bludgeoned this wonderful woman to death in front of their five-year-old son with a 4x4, then broke a fireplace poker, stabbing her body with it to ensure she was dead. On February 8, 2001, David Messenger was found not guilty of manslaughter by reason of mental defect. The three-judge court found him to be clever and manipulative and noted of the defense psychiatrist's testimony that Dr. Selig's analysis of the literature reveals a likelihood of between 70 and 75 percent incidence of recurrent episodes of people suffering from delusional disorders. The millionaire psycho's own shrink said there was a 70 to 75 percent chance David Messenger's delusional disorder would happen again in the future. The court wrote in its opinion, the court finds his history unequivocally reveals a capacity for explosive violence. In this regard, he remains a danger to the community. He remains at risk of repeating his conduct. It is recommended to the board that the acquittee not be considered for conditional release. From his new home in a psychiatric facility, Messenger quickly sought to manipulate the system and has repeatedly caused a public stir in Middletown, Connecticut by his efforts to regularly attend church. Apparently, this con man cannot communicate adequately with God from within his comfortable confinement. For in August 2008, he sued the city of Middletown and its mayor for not permitting him his regular church visits, alleging violation of his rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act and the First Amendment to the Constitution. That this criminal would pervert laws intended for good is hardly surprising, given his record. And now, after merely 10 years in a psychiatric hospital, David Messenger argues that he is cured, that he has forgiven himself, and that he poses no risk to anyone else because next time he'd know better. He has never apologized to any of Heather's family, and the prior psychotic episodes, which his shrinks previously emphasized to shield him from criminal responsibility, are now minimized as unrelated and not relevant to a determination of whether his berserk rage will resurface. This all sounds very consistent with the position of a narcissistic, opportunistic predator. The family of Heather Williamson prays that Connecticut will continue to be protected from this brutal and manipulative killer, and that he will not be permitted to so soon walk and drive freely spending the money he earned slaughtering a vibrant mother and her unborn child in front of a little boy. A man who through delusion is convinced he must kill his wife with a club in front of his child is probably not very much to be trusted around complete strangers in an unstructured community. It is to be hoped that Connecticut will not be coerced by civil suits or other threats of a wealthy maniac, and that the original sentencing court's recommendation will be wisely heeded, that the acquittee not be considered for conditional release. The primary concern must be the protection of society.
Get that thing out of your eye. Look, I know what the date is. 1027. <laughs> oh, they date them when they record them? Uh, yes, it's something I'm in the corner. Sure. <laughs> so, what do you have to say for yourself? Very damn little. <laughs> you know, that can be used against you in the first place. Everyone else will, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it figured out. There's Hannah in the sunshine. Isn't that beautiful? This is Hannah going to make a sandwich.